As Jesus' words have spirit and life, so do ours. Can I just share this with you, friends? I mean, the Bible uh, encourages us to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But you don't have to do that. You can release the power of God with your words. Yes. Stand up and walk. Be healed. Pain go. Yeah, that's right. How can we get a person healed on the other side of the world? I can't touch them. Yeah, I all I have to do is just speak the word. There is no distance in prayer. There's no distance in me confessing the word of God. There's no distance in me commending things to happen. We have proved this over and over and over again of prayer requests of people on the other side of the world. How do you minister to people on the other side of the world? Same way as if they were standing right in front of you. Amen. All right? Aunt Susie lives in China. And she's got cancer. All right? How do we minister or how do we pray for Aunt Susie? We don't. We don't pray for her. We minister life to her. In the name of Jesus, I command that cancer that is Aunt Susie and in Aunt Susie to go in Jesus' name. Aunt Susie be healed now in Jesus' name. See, just like they were right there. There's no distance in prayer. Your words have spirit and your words have life. The only thing you have to do is to believe that when you do that, that, that it works. Yes. Listen to the scripture, Mark 11, 23. If you say to the mountain, oh, I think there's a verily, verily in front of that one, too. Yes. Yes. Verily, verily, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed. Okay, what's the mountain? Well, we just gave a, a case. It was, it was the cancer in Aunt Susie's body. Right. Verily, verily, I say to you, whosoever, that means anybody can do this. Yeah. Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed. Okay, cancer, be removed. Cancer, go. Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things you say will come to pass. You know, I find this out, that a lot of people will believe you, that you'll say it when you say it'll come to pass, but when they say it, they don't believe it'll come to pass. And so they're always looking, no condemnation, but they're always looking for someone else to do it for them. And it was never God's intention for us as Christians to run to meeting to meeting to get some special anointed man or woman of God to pray for us or to go to a certain geographical location and there's a special anointing there. No, that was never God's intention. That's not Bible. Every single one of us carry the full-blown person and manifestation of the anointing of the Spirit of God, the authority of God, the name of Jesus, every place we go. Amen. Uh, how many of you ever heard of F.F. F. Bosworth? Christ the healer, yep. okay? This man went all over the world and had tremendous miracles and healings, and he did not pray for people. He taught the people how to pray. He taught the people how to receive for themselves. So if he did an excursion and he went to Africa, he didn't go there and everybody ran to him and, okay, he's, the, the man of God's going to pray for us and he's going to minister to us and he's going to set us free. Nothing wrong with that, friends. But can I say this to you? This is kind of my little pet peeve and the drawback that I have with major ministries. They say, okay, here's the anointed man of God, here's the anointed woman of God, woman of God, and you give your money to us so that we can go all over the world and people can come to our meetings and they can come to our meetings and they can get healed. Wrong. Those people should be teaching you how to do the same thing that they do. Amen. Why? That was the ministry of Jesus. That's what discipleship is. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, verse 18, he said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Now you go and teach or make disciples of all nations. Listen, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. What Jesus taught his disciples was to do the same thing that he did. That's what every single Christian is supposed to be doing. Yes, right. Not just getting this for ourselves, but duplicating ourselves, which is really duplicating Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 See, the, the Great Commission is not going getting people saved. I mean, that's the start. But the Great Commission is going and making disciples. Yes. Disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, <laughs> here's a revelation for you. You're the only Jesus that people are going to see. That's right. So Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Can you say that to people? Yes. Can you tell them to imitate you as you imitate Christ? We should be able to say that. That's right. Amen. Amen. No condemnation. Wow. Amen. But that's reality. 
You know, it's, it's amazing to me if you read the epistles, how the disciples said this, that they followed God, but they also followed us. They followed our example. So the disciples were exhibiting the person and the character and the power and the love of Jesus Christ. Why do we think that we can't do that any less? Amen? Now, listen, we're not going to do it by works of the law. We're only going to do that by grace. Yes. Amen. Because the harder we try to perfect ourselves, the more we're going to fail. Right. The more we rely on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we rely on the perfect uh, uh, person of Jesus Christ who is grace. See, you become what you behold. And if you keep looking at your faults and your shortcomings and your sins and you keep looking at the law, guess what? <laughs> You're going to see nothing but blemishes. But if you look in the mirror and you see Jesus Christ and perfection and grace, you're going to become what you behold. Amen. So one way of looking at John 6 and 63, as Jesus spoke, his words were spirit and light, so are ours. When you speak, spirit comes out. Think about that. When you speak, you are releasing the spirit of life. Now there's another way of looking at this. God's word is spirit and it's life. And when we act on that, we can expect the life and the spirit of God to be released when we act on the word of God. Amen? So Jesus is our example. He's our standard. Mark chapter 1 and verse 17, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, follow me and I will make you disciples of men. Now, that word follow means to get behind me, do what I do, say what I say, and the rest of that scripture says this in the original Greek. It says, and I will raise you up, and I will thrust you out, and I will cause you to come into being. Did you catch that? Now listen, that would be hard, except I've got the perfect picture of Jesus Christ right here in this Bible. I can do what he did. I can say what he said. Okay, how do you cast out devils? Well, when there were devils, Jesus said... In my name, you shall cast out devils. Okay, what did Jesus do when there was devils? Come out. Go. Come out. How do I heal in a case where people need healing? Jesus, be healed. Stretch forth your hand. Rise up and walk. Go your way. I've got the perfect example, and I can do what Jesus did. I can say what Jesus says. When I act on that, when I say that in line with it, God raises me up, he thrusts me out, and he causes me to come into being just like Jesus. Yes. Are you catching this? Yes. Okay. See, he said we do the same works that, that we would do. And so I already quoted this scripture to you, but over in John 17, Jesus prayed this for us, that we would be one with him just like he's one with the Father. Mm -hmm. And the same glory. Say it, the same glory. Same. See, you don't have a different glory. You don't have a different Holy Spirit, which the glory and the Holy Spirit are synonymous. The glory is the resurrection power of God. The glory is all that makes God God. All right? Uh, the Bible says in Romans 6 and 4 that God raised Jesus from the dead by the glory of the Father. Well, we know in Romans 8 11, he raised him by the resurrection power of the person of the Holy Spirit. So the glory of God and the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit must be synonymous. Amen? Amen. The glory of God, the resurrection power of God, it's synonymous with the person of the Holy Spirit, of which we received the second that we were born again. Jesus prayed that for us, that we would receive the same glory. Say the same glory. The same. See, you don't have a different glory. You don't have a different anointing. You don't have different authority. You don't have different power. Right. You have the same spirit, the same glory, the same resurrection power. Okay, why don't I see it? Why don't I experience? Well, two reasons. One, you may not know about it. And two, you may have been taught opposite to that. See, any teaching that minimizes Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27, which is your intent, is simply that. It is a teaching that is minimizing Christ in you. And it should not. We should not be minimized in any way. And so it's taken the church nigh at least 2,000 years in excess for us to catch 